Hello guys. In this video we're going to take a look at this Sukhoi 17 in 148 scale from Kitty Hawk. Now I should point out here that the box says SU17 slash 22 UM3K. My understanding is that the original SU17 was a single crew aircraft but the two-seater training versions were developed. And the version mentioned here on the box out, the 22 UM3K, is one of those two-seater training versions. And as we'll see in a minute from the instructions and the paint schemes, all of the versions in this kit are two-seater versions. Now honestly, I don't know enough about this aircraft to say whether or not that means that all the versions are there for training versions. So maybe somebody who knows a bit better than me can let me know in the comments below. The SU-17 had the NATO reporting name Fitter, and it and its variants were produced from 1969 to 1990, primarily being used by the former Soviet Union, the former Warsaw Pact countries, and other countries including Angola, Iraq, Libya, Peru, Yemen and Syria. And in fact I do believe that these were used by Iraq during the first Gulf War. Kits of the SU-17 or SU-22 are made by several companies in 148 scale, including Edouard, Hobby Boss, and KP. And of course there are a number of kits available in other scales too. I've never built a Kitty Hawk kit before. I do have the Jaguar in the stash, and I did notice that the cockpit halves of that were quite badly warped, so I'm hoping this will be a bit better. To be honest, I bought this kit because of the paint scheme on the box art. This Tiger scheme really jumped out at me. Although, now I've looked inside, I may be having second thoughts on that. Anyway, let's have a look at the box. So one thing you'll notice in this kit is we have a good number of paint schemes. Here are a couple, one for the Czech Air Force, one for the Ukrainian Air Force, and lots of uh, weapons and fuel tanks and so on as well. We've got four more schemes here. Polish Air Force, German Air Force, the Soviet Air Force, and the Hungarian Air Force. And this is why I picked this kit up. It was uh, on sale. I got this for uh, 45 Singaporean dollars in a nice little model shop in Singapore. So let's look inside the box and it is absolutely full. We'll come back to the instruction shortly. But you can see a huge amount of plastic in here. Got six or seven sprues in here. Let's start with the instructions. So it's quite a thick instruction manual. A sprue map here on the inside cover, including three decal sheets. Straight away we get to building the two pilot seats. As you can see, these are uh, quite detailed in themselves. Each one consists of a good number of parts. So what have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, about thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, probably nearly twenty parts there for each seat plus some photo etch parts over the top there for the seat belts. The Vickers number no. 1 tank I built recently had fewer parts than that. Then we move on to building up the cockpit. Step 2 continues that with the instrument panels and the cockpit sides. Then we seem to have a detailed engine. which then gets encased in step three, so we can't see too much of that detail. And you can see we've got optional holes there, presumably for some kind of armament, which we'll have to look for later. Then that engine gets completely encased. We've got some paint callouts there, including RLMO2. I think maybe we need to check that and just make sure that is correct. Step 5 is the undercarriage, or the front undercarriage should I say. 
that's quite nice how it goes in there as a separate piece, just sits in, underneath the cockpit and then gets encased. And then it's quite a funny sort of tubular structure where the tube of the cockpit fits into the tube containing the engine. I'm not quite sure what they're indicating we need to fill there in that step. I'll have to look at that more carefully. Then in the middle of the instructions we have one of these uh, colour call outs. So this is sort of a fold out section right in the middle and this is that box art scheme here you can see which is the Polish Air Force with this very, very interesting um, tiger pattern going all the way across it. And that looks like it's on top of the sort of standard um, Polish Air Force camo scheme. On the other side we have the Soviet Air Force scheme. So that's a what, a one, two, three, four, five colour I think camo scheme, four or five colour camo scheme. We then have the German Air Force scheme. And the Hungarian Air Force scheme. Then we have the Czech Air Force scheme. Again, very, very similar in terms of the colours. It is uh, simply different markings and insignia. And then finally, very similar again, although a different underside this time for the Ukrainian Air Force. Next up, we have a painting guide and a decal guide for the various armaments. So we've got some bombs there, some fuel tanks, etc. We'll look at those in more detail later. Then the building instructions continue with some additions to the uh, fuselage. So we have our canopies being added and various sort of uh, rails and so on. The main landing gear are next. Then what I believe is the inner part of the wing. Yes, it is, and then followed by the, uh, the remainder of the wing, because of course this is a variable geometry wing. In fact, I believe the Su-17 was the first variable geometry wing aircraft used by the Soviets. I'm not sure from these instructions so far whether we can equip those wings so that they are movable, or if we have to choose a geometry for them. It shows them swept forward here. As we have the tail planes. And then lots of the hard points here for mounting the weapons. The weapons and fuel tanks themselves, the payload here. And quite a handy table here at the back telling us what uh, ordnance can go on what uh, hard points. I do seem to remember on another Kitty Heart kit um, some reviews online saying that this table was completely wrong. So I don't know whether the one for the uh, SU-17 is correct or not. And that's it, that's it for the instructions. So let's take a look at the sprues. This is the first one. They're quite small sprues in terms of the number of parts. It looks here like we've got the cockpit floor and walls and one or two of the instrument panels there. And I'm assuming that those fuselage halves there are the front of the fuselage. So if we can zoom in and get some focus, there we go. We've got some lovely um, detail there, some really nice fine panel lines. I think that shape there might have been the one that the instructions was telling us to fill. So rather than filling the entire shape, it looks like maybe just filling those rivet uh, marks in there. I'll have to double check that. That looks very finely moulded indeed, doesn't it? There's one of our instrument panels. 
nicely recessed um, displays there, or a little ribbon around them that's raised. Well, this all looks very nice so far. Next up is a much bigger sprue. I haven't removed any parts from here, there just are some big gaps uh, within the sprue for some reason. And here it looks like we have the rear of the fuselage in the four corners, plus various uh, flaps and aerolons and other bits and pieces. Again, if we zoom in, the texture detail, the surface detail looks really nice. I can see a wash flowing down these panel lines very well, lots of small rivet detail. Even here on the, uh, what I guess are the inside of the uh, aerolons or the flaps. It looks like in most cases the ejector pin marks are on the sides that won't be seen. Uh, let's hope that's the case. Next up is another very large sprue. Clearly we've got all the engine parts here, plus various pieces and aerials and uh, pitot tubes and things like that it looks like. There's a fair amount of cabling and wiring detail on this engine, but I didn't notice in the instructions any way of displaying that, which is a bit of a shame. Got the fan blades here, wheels. And a few more bits and pieces on this sprue, along with lots of uh, weaponry. Or fuel tanks, actually, I think they are. And you can see from the size of those just how big the aircraft will be when it's built. These look like some kind of control panels for the cockpit. So it does seem that maybe the parts for certain areas are spread around the sprues, which can... Uh, yes, it is. There's another... Um, another uh, control panel there. So that can get a bit frustrating sometimes when you're building and it's one part from every sprue virtually. But um, nevertheless, the detail does look good. Okay, let's switch to the decal sheets which come together in this bag with the PE parts. So there's the photo etch. Primarily seat belts and then some long sort of rail type pieces. I did see those mentioned in the instructions, though I'm not 100% sure what they are. I think maybe a couple of them might be rails for the ejector seats. Here's our first decal sheet. So this looks like it contains the national insignias. We've got the Polish there in the top left, Soviet, um, the Czech down there. Um, the Ukrainian one will be the blue and the yellow in the center there plus that tiger's head, which is the uh, the box art scheme. And it looks like a few stencils on here as well, at the bottom. Here we have a fairly large sheet of stencils. I think the majority of these are for the payload. And then lower down we've got some uh, instrument panel decals, I think they're for the cockpit. Then we have the third and final decal sheet, with these huge tiger skin decals, which of course are the um, decals for the box art scheme. Now this is the predicament I have because I bought this kit very clearly for the box art scheme, this tiger scheme. However, maybe I was a little bit naive when I bought it and now I'm thinking, well, I'm thinking a couple of things. Firstly, I'm not super impressed by the color on these decals. Um, the yellows and the oranges just don't look fantastic. In particular, the head that we saw on the other sheet doesn't seem to match the colours on this uh, this sheet here. And if we look at a couple of reference photos from the internet, I think you can see here that the kit decals don't really match the real life colours here. And in particular, this tiger's head is yellow, whereas in reality there it's orange. And if we look at the uh, payload below there, we've clearly got some bright red and yellow paintwork um, on the real life aircraft, whereas if we look at the decals, they're just a sort of orangey yellow and a, an orangey red, aren't they? They're not, yeah, they're a bit disappointing, aren't they? I think as I'm making this video, I'm deciding that I'm not going to use this uh, tiger scheme. My other concern is that these are huge decals and I don't have a lot of experience 
I don't have a lot of positive experience putting down large decals like these. I've done it before, or I've tried to do it before when I've made F1 cars and trying to get them to um, to adhere to these compound curves on F1 cars is really, really difficult. And invariably, even if you get them down, you end up with a couple of wrinkles or they just, they look like a flat covering over the um, the body and a lot of that detail is lost. So that's what I, I kind of fear about putting these down, that all that uh, panel line detail or that rivet detail might end up getting lost because of these decals and that will potentially detract from the overall appearance of the aircraft. On the other hand, these decals are of course sort of the, the primary drawer of this, uh, this boxing and I'm sure just these decals, this paint scheme on its own, added a fair bit to the price of the, the, uh, the kit. So to be honest, I'm not too sure. I think what I might do is paint the aircraft in that standard sort of um, Soviet era camo scheme because it seems to be the same between all of the marking options. And then before anything else, try to get these decals down. And if they don't go down, then I can just rip them off and throw them away and still have a correct paint scheme for any of the other decal options which are in the kit. But I don't know. Anyway guys, that was a quick look inside the box of the Kitty Hawk 148th scale SU-17-22. While you are watching this video, I'm away travelling for a week or so, so I'm away from the model bench. But I do have a couple of projects that are almost complete for when I return to it. In the meantime, I would like to say thank you to all of you for watching, and special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. I really appreciate the support that each and every one of you give me. So thank you very much, thank you for watching, and until next time, have fun modelling.